Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Fuel the Adrenaline Outdoors. I'm Noah Frail, and today we're going to be reviewing the iFish Pro 2.0. Stay tuned. So straight out of the box, you'll see we have our tip up here, all compact and it's sleek looking design. Check it out. Um, also we have our flag we have to install and uh, they also included some extra trigger mechanisms. No, there's five there. But uh, let's unfold this thing. This is your rod holder arm. And then we'll, uh, we'll let our flag up. Let's install this flag quick. And we are all assembled. So this is what you're getting in the box. Next, let's look at some cool features of the iFish Pro that make it worth your investment. Take a look at the base of this thing. You'll see we have 12 inches of coverage. So it'll cover those eight inch holes. It'll cover those 10 inch holes. Uh, and also built in the bottom is a layer of foam insulation behind this cover. So when you lay it over your ice hole, you won't get that ice buildup that quickly on those cold days. Also, you notice uh, the appearance of this thing is matte black. It helps retain the heat from the sun to also keep that hole opened up for you on those cold sunny days. You'll notice off to the side here we have a fully adjustable extension arm to accommodate any ice rod you have up to 46 inches in length. You simply undo this wing nut and that's for the smaller rods and this is for the big boys. So taking a look at our trigger mechanism here you'll see it's fully adjustable. If we move our trigger this way you hear there's like three notches there. This notch being the heaviest bite if you're targeting those fish like muskie, pike, walleye, fish that really hit hard. I like to keep mine on this first setting here and I like to target crappie, perch, bass, kind of fish that hit it a little lighter. Uh, just makes it easier for them to pull the trigger mechanism off and set the flag off. Lastly, I like to point out how iFish Pro actually incorporated a wind deflector around their tip up system. This is pretty awesome. It allows for less false flags. And also check out how high this flag stands. They use a 14 inch high flag made out of plastic so it can never tear off or anything or blow around in the wind. And it's uh, easy to see. All right, after going over some cool features of the iFish Pro 2.0, let's actually get a rod set up to put in this thing and show you guys how it actually works in action. All right, so as far as your rod and reel setup, you don't need anything special. Right here, I have a 13 Fishing Thermo Ice 24 inch rod. I paired it with a Okuma Area Black uh, ABL 1000 reel. Nothing special here, guys. This was actually my first jigging setup getting into ice fishing, but I'm gonna move you guys closer. I'm gonna show you on the table here how I set this up to be used in the iFish Pro. All right, so before we get rigging this thing up, what you guys are gonna need is a bobber stop and a small bead. Uh, the bobber stop will go first, then we'll thread the bead on the line, the trigger mechanism, and then our hook. So let's start with putting the bobber stop on our line. So simply we grab our line, thread the bobber stop on, slip the little black straw out, cinch down each side of the bobber stop, and then we're gonna cut our tag ends. All right, so our bobber stop is on our fishing line. Next, we're gonna thread our bead on there. Grab our bead. Might need glasses for this. All right, we got our bead threaded on there. Next, we're gonna put on our trigger, trigger mechanism. There's a couple different holes to use. I'm gonna use the top hole. Our trigger's on. And next is our hook. Let me go grab a hook out of my tackle box there. Alrighty, everyone, so I just grabbed a hook, I tied it on there, and we are all set up and ready to go. Again, reviewing this, we have our bobber stop, we have our bead, trigger, and our hook. So let's, uh, let's put this iFish Pro back in the center of the table here and 
hook this thing up. All right, so our rod and reel is in the rod holder here, but as you can see, it's a little bit farther away from the center of the hole, which I would like. So we're gonna simply release this wing nut here, move the whole arm closer, and then cinch that back down. Kind of all we got right there. And this is our basic setup. This is what we're gonna see out there on, on the hard water. So next, what we have to do is determine our depth. So we're gonna grab our hook as you would with a regular tip up. We're gonna grab our weight, and this is gonna be sent down the hole. And with doing so, we're gonna come across our bobber stop, as you can see right there. That bobber stop is basically like our button. A lot of guys use buttons on their tip ups to determine the depth and keep that depth uh, where they're fishing all day. So this is gonna determine the depth of where you want your bait. Uh, if you like it off right on the bottom, some guys like it a little bit up, a couple feet up from the bottom. Wherever this is, is where your hook is gonna be relative to the bottom. So once you get that set to where you want it, we are going to bring our hook back up out of the hole, bait up, send our bait down, and now it's time to set our trigger. I'm gonna bring you guys closer and show you how we do that. All right, so now it's time to set our trigger. Right here, I'm gonna grab this trigger here. I'm gonna grab our trigger mechanism here. I'm gonna fish our trigger on the mechanism just like this, I can grab that, just like so. So that's on there like that. I'm gonna bend our flag over, and I'm gonna set it at the desired um, hit location where we want. Right now, like I said earlier, I have it at the lightest setting. This was the heaviest setting. So now I'm gonna move you guys to a better location to where you can see when I tug on this, it's gonna let this flag go up. So if a fish were to take it now, the bobber stop actually pushes on the bead, which pushes on the trigger, sets this off and sets our flag up. That's basically what happened here, guys. Also, don't forget we need to either set the drag super light on our reel or open your bail. I like to open my bail. That's what a lot of guys do, um, but just open that bail so the whole fish doesn't pull your rod, uh, so the fish doesn't pull your whole rod into the ice hole. I just wanna show you this setup one more time, guys. We're gonna take our trigger mechanism here, fish our trigger on it, Take our flag, bend it over, set it at where we want right there. I'm gonna come around the table, pretend I'm a fish. And boom, our flag goes off. Simple as that. All right, so say we come upon our tip up, we have a flag, the fish is taking line out as we can see. Simply we grab our rod out of the holder, flip the bail, Make sure our drag is set to where we'd like. We're gonna reel up to the fish. See how it lines down there? We're gonna reel up to the fish so we start to feel weight and then set the hook. We're gonna then reel our fish up and we have our catch on the iFish Pro. Like I said earlier, I actually had some time on the ice with this thing already this year. And I think I have a cool clip to include right here of me catching a pretty nice perch uh, with the iFish Pro. I'm gonna include it right now. That's a big perch. <laughs> Yay! Take it. Look at him! How cute is he? <laughs> This thing is pretty cool, you gotta admit. I mean, it's pretty crazy to think where ice fishing has come and the innovations and products they make every year to make the sport that much better. I'll never forget the roots. This is the old hard water explorer. This is my first set of tip ups. I have a set of four of them. I still use these things and I still enjoy cranking fish in on these, but I'll tell you, this iFish Pro is pretty awesome. Like I said, I got this as a gift last year. I only own one of them and I plan on buying more. So if you're on the fence of getting one of these things, I hope this video was helpful to you and I highly recommend getting one. Uh, it's something different, it's something fun on the ice. But when buying more, just remember you need an extra rod and reel to use. But I think that's it for this episode. I hope this video was helpful um, and we'll see you in the next one. Thank you.